All right, guys, real quick, just going through some of the flexor zones. These are important because depending on the flexor zone that you're in, it can help tell you what kind of injury you can anticipate and also some of the different methods for reconstruction of flexor tendon injuries. So distal to the flexor digitorum superficialis insertion, which is right here at the middle aspect of the middle phalanx, this is determined as zone one. So basically, the only tendon that you could potentially injure if you injure a zone one of the hand on the flexor side or the palmar side, by definition, again, this has to be an injury to only the flexor digitorum profundus because the distal aspect of the finger after the insertion of the FDS or flexor digitorum superficialis, that means zone one is only an FDP injury. Now, from the insertion of the flexor digitorum superficialis proximal all the way to the A1 pulley, annular pulley, which are some of the pulleys that are important for keeping the flexor tendons in the position that they're in and do not prevent displacement when you flex your fingers. So zone two is from the FDS insertion site all the way to the A1 pulley. This is called no man's land because historically with some of the previous reconstructive methods, they've gotten a little bit better nowadays you would have a higher risk for fibrous adhesions because of the fiber osseous tunnels that are made of the pulleys. This is the most important area to get your reconstruction done well. From the A1 pulley to the distal edge of the transverse carpal ligament, that is defined as zone three. This is where the also the lumbricals are gonna originate from the radial side of the flexor digitorum profundus. This is also why it's an important area because you start getting a lot more muscles in this in the zone one and zone two there's not many muscles there not so much concern for a compartment syndrome or anything because compartment syndrome is mostly related to muscle ischemia so zone three again a1 pulley to the distal edge of the transverse carpal ligament zone four is basically everything that's within the carpal tunnel and zone five is the proximal edge of the transverse carpal ligament and whatever is more proximal. That's basically the musculotendinous junctions where the flexor muscles start transitioning and becoming tendons. So again, this is important because whenever you call someone and you try to describe to them where the injury is, you're gonna say it's ulnar, it's radial, it's in zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. That way the person knows exactly what type of injury you're talking about. For the thumb, it's a little bit different. There's zone one, zone two, and zone three, and zone four. We'll talk about those in another video.